Raiders, brave individuals who hunted shadow creatures, looted treasures, and protected the people, were revered as heroes despite the dangers that came with their job. Zhang Wumin, a man working at a raider agency, acted as a broker for raiders who were not affiliated with any guild, just like himself. When he contacted her, she knew it meant a job opportunity after a long time. However, her excitement quickly faded when she heard the request. It was as if she was being asked to be a living shield in case something dangerous occurred. Being a raider outside of any guild was already challenging enough, and now he called Ye Hyun again for a job. Ye Hyun was thrilled to receive his first job, but he was taken aback by the nature of it. She wanted him to be on the front lines, facing undead monsters in a dungeon, armed only with a shield. Eleven years ago, during her third year of high school, she had excelled in the Awakening Aptitude Test, scoring an impressive 97% in magic talent. In comparison, the current top magician, Seo Ina, only had a talent score of 92%. However, Jae Hyun ultimately chose the path of battle, as magic users had a tarnished reputation at the time. Now, the tides had turned, and magic users were glorified, while battle users like Jae Hyun were in decline. He couldn't help but wonder if his life would have been better if he had chosen to become a magician 11 years ago. Nevertheless, dwelling on the past was futile, as raiders typically stopped evolving after the age of 20. There was no point in regretting the choices made. While Wuman was still attempting to persuade her that such opportunities do not arise frequently, she eventually agreed to take on the job. The following day, she arrived at the dungeon surrounded by numerous magicians, but Wuman was nowhere to be found. The young man believed that Wuman would be better off partnering with a more skilled raider than himself, as he was only a rank D raider class warrior, while Wuman was a rank A magician. Suddenly, he was approached by a man who greeted him, Myung Ho, who had also arrived for the same reason, the need for money and the lucrative nature of the job. It was time to enter the dungeon and at this moment, a raider must be mindful of two things. The first being the possibility of stumbling upon an unexpected virtual fortune within the dungeon, which could potentially cloud the raider's judgment. The second is the danger that arises when one lets their guard down, as the dungeon tests them to determine whether their success is due to luck or if it is merely a facade for impending tragedy. Myung Ho questioned why she was constantly checking her phone before entering the dungeon, while he himself gazed at a photo of his mother. As the soldiers faced off against the monsters, the magician kept them at bay, reducing the immediate danger. Following the raid, Myung Ho inquired whether she had obtained any valuable items, as remarkable drops were common in a rank A dungeon. Upon inspection, he discovered an anomaly. The system had unexpectedly shut down, resulting in a temporary disconnection from the user. This was an unprecedented occurrence for him, leaving him bewildered. Suddenly, a voice echoed in his mind, revealing that an unidentified entity had breached the system. Instructed to trace the path of a peculiar light visible only to him, Jaehyun rose and began to pursue it, perplexed by the system's sudden shutdown and the mysterious events unfolding before him. Jaehyun continued to follow the path illuminated by the light. He repeatedly checked his notification window, only to find that the notification remained unchanged. The system was currently experiencing technical difficulties, preventing him from accessing the status window. Jaehyun couldn't help but wonder what was happening. He had been encountering Awakeners since he was 10 years old. But the system had never malfunctioned in the past 17 years. Perhaps the advanced system was undergoing significant changes. This advanced system referred to the Asgardian gods, such as Odin and Thor, who were humanity's last hope. Twenty years ago, humanity was pushed to the brink of extinction. A colossal tree of unknown origin sprouted in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, seemingly overnight. Some considered it a harbinger of human annihilation, while others saw it as a tree of blessings. Its true name, however, was Yggdrasil, the world tree mentioned in mythology. On the ninth day after its appearance, tragedy struck. Unprecedented disasters in the form of monstrous creatures began to ravage the world. 
These monsters claim the lives of half of humanity, leaving the remaining survivors to face starvation and plague. Amidst the despair that engulfed everyone, a glimmer of hope emerged. A hero, wielding the authority of the gods, was born. The advanced system became the most formidable weapon in the hands of humanity's strongest champion. However, any significant changes to its design now would not bode well. Following the path of light, Jaehyun arrived at a colossal door, which he believed to be a gateway to treasure. To his surprise, he discovered a dungeon-like place beyond the door, filled with wondrous artifacts. Intrigued, he ventured further to explore the marvels that awaited him. Jaehyun came to a realization about Zhang Wumin's actions. He questioned whether Wumin was responsible for spreading the poisonous mist and attacking the Meteor Alliance. Wumin admitted to his crime, claiming that it was at the request of his client. Due to the Meteor Guild's unpopularity, he decided to eliminate them all. Today, not only was the Meteor Fellowship targeted, but also Jaehyun himself. Jaehyun inquired if it was his own father who had ordered Wumin to kill him. Shockingly, Wumin revealed that he was the one who had killed Jaehyun's mother five years ago. Suddenly, a surge of magical energy began to flow towards Jaehyun, growing stronger by the moment. As Wumin pondered what was happening to him, he realized that he needed to end this fight swiftly. He launched his final attack directly at Jaehyun's eyes, but to his surprise, Jaehyun remained unharmed. A message appeared, indicating that the missing item from Odin's eye had been equipped. Now, Jaehyun intended to inflict as much pain as possible on Wumin. He activated the lightning chain skill and launched an attack. The Bloom encounter attacked as well, but just as that happened, Ahan initiated the universal skill drop, causing a powerful chain to rush towards Wumin. He sustained severe injuries and ultimately fell to the ground unconscious as he had depleted his stamina and magic. Suddenly, a message appeared notifying Jaehyun that a new operating system or near system had been executed. From now on, he would be a more formidable and stronger enemy. Additionally, he had acquired passive skills that had been noticed by the gods. When Jaehyun regained consciousness, he found himself back in his room. Overwhelmed with relief, he rushed to embrace his mother, hoping that he would never have to wake up from this dream. Today's date is November 15th, 2020. A notification appeared, informing him that he had successfully traveled back in time to the period he desired the most. Jaehyun found himself in his childhood home and received a message advising him to rest and prioritize his health. This was a precious opportunity for him to rectify his past mistakes and become a skilled magician. Remarkably, his mother was still alive, but he sensed that something was troubling her. After much contemplation, she requested him to switch his application to the magician class granting him the freedom to pursue his desires. A few days later, he accomplished his first quest, which was to take a break and rejuvenate. As a reward for his achievement, he obtained a blank card. Now his crucial task was to select a skill that would benefit him the most. Wisely, he decided to utilize the blank card to acquire a healing skill. In this era, magicians were often disregarded compared to warriors, but healers were an exception and held high regard. Regardless of his location, he would not be looked down upon if he possessed healing abilities. Unexpectedly, he received a call from his childhood friend, who had tragically passed away in a terrible incident. On the other end of the line was the Korean saintess, who had selflessly sacrificed herself for the Korean people. However, her face appeared pale due to her demanding schedule. The person driving the car contemplated the need for another individual with a recovery spell equivalent to sacrifice, as it would greatly aid in healing her. If the situation persisted, the Korean saintess might soon succumb to exhaustion. Jaehyun paid a visit to his friend, but instead of being supportive, he decided to mock her for struggling with directions. In response, she took him along to Yoo Seung Yoon's residence. Yoo Seung Yoon, the esteemed guildmaster Yeon Hwa Saintess, was renowned not only in their country, but also worldwide for her exceptional healing abilities. During a time when being a raider was uncommon, she was one of the first to prioritize the safety of citizens. 
Yu Xiong Yun possessed the foresight that in two months' time she would face a critical condition due to the strain of her healing spells during a dungeon attack. After delivering a speech, Jae Hyun headed towards his car and asked his driver if he could arrange a meeting with Yu Xiong Yun. Assuming he was just another fan, she was taken aback when he revealed his knowledge of her incurable disease and a potential cure. Angered by this revelation, she demanded to know where he had heard about the Guildmaster's illness. However, Yu Seung Yun quickly silenced her and turned to Jae Hyun, questioning whether he was prepared to take responsibility for his words. Despite the skepticism, Jae Hyun firmly believed in his ability to heal her and was aware that he would be apprehended if he was lying. Taking him to his office, Yu Seung Yun inquired about how he had come to learn about her condition. Upon reaching the office, they pressed Jae Hyun to disclose how he had obtained knowledge of her illness. However, he adamantly refused to reveal his source. Furthermore, he had devised a plan to replicate her sacrificial skill and heal her using his own magic. Yu Seung Yun demonstrated her skill to him and requested that he replicate it. As she transferred the talent onto a blank card and enrolled him into it, Jae Hyun vowed to earn her trust first by showcasing his own sacrificial abilities. He inquired about his desires for their alliance, in return for curing her illness. Jae Hyun then requested her sponsorship, to which she immediately agreed, promising to invest in him without hesitation. However, he had a condition that required him to align with Yonhwa's guild. He acknowledged that it was against the law to form a contract between a guild and an immature student, but he believed she would address this matter later. For now, his priority was to heal her. As he activated the skill sacrifice and began the healing process, Yu Seung Yun could sense her body gradually recovering. Finally, he successfully healed her. She handed him her business card and encouraged him to reach out whenever he needed. Jae Hyun sought permission to visit the Yunhua Guild's low rank dungeon. Millet's Academy was renowned for hosting competitions among geniuses from all over Korea. If Jae Hyun wished to survive in such a competitive environment, he knew he had to level up, and the Academy provided the ideal training ground for him. Jae Hyun had gathered curative items and basic tools necessary for the dungeon raid. Additionally, they provided him with a spare fellowship item and a warp stone for a quick return to the guild entrance. Breaking the stone would serve as an apology for any perceived rudeness. Upon entering the dungeon, he sensed the magical energy of the E rank, indicating its importance. Without hesitation, he delved into the dungeon only to be confronted by monsters that swiftly overpowered him. A notification from the Nornir system informed him of his relocation to Helheim, the realm of the dead. Meanwhile, his secretary presented Ye Hyun's profile, revealing his surprising status as a warrior class applicant with unexpected magical abilities. Intrigued, he summoned his driver to escort him to the office. As he emerged from the basement, he found himself in a dire situation in Helheim, facing a monster that unleashed paralyzing poison. Reacting swiftly, he activated the sacrifice skill to defeat the creature. In the meantime, a multitude of other monstrous creatures emerged, all poised to launch an attack against him. As Jae Hyun observed, they began to organize themselves with the sole purpose of taking him down. He was left to face them alone, armed only with his equipped items to fend off the impending onslaught. It was a treacherous environment for novice fighters, as the sheer terror of confronting undead enemies, both dead and revived, was indescribable. Furthermore, without divine skills, it was even more challenging to confront them. Ye Hyun decided to switch his skill to the Judgment of Light, specifically tailored to combat the undead monsters. With the aid of this skill, he successfully vanquished one of the warriors, earning himself 70 experience points. As a mage with no prior experience, he gained an additional 140 points. Having defeated two ghosts, Ye Hyun couldn't afford to miss such an opportunity. He launched an attack on the skeleton warrior with his weapon, ultimately triumphing over it. He then activated the skill of sacrifice, defeating another opponent and earning 100 points. As a result, his level increased by one, and he fully restored his health. However, he found himself at a loss on how to return and considered using the warp stone. Suddenly, 
he sensed a surge of mana and began experiencing difficulty breathing. Unable to comprehend what was approaching, Jaehyun found himself unable to utter a single sound. He had no inkling of what lay in close proximity. Soon enough, he realized that a shadow loomed behind him. The boss of the Nightshade Dungeon had made its appearance, and the level disparity between the boss and Yehyun posed a grave danger. A warning urged him to swiftly escape the dungeon, but before he could react, the shadow closed in on him, causing the warp stone to slip from his grasp. He sustained severe injuries, prompting a message to use healing items immediately. Left with no other choice, he had to confront the boss. However, to his surprise, the boss suddenly ceased its movement. A girl had intervened, claiming that she had brought him there herself. It became evident that she was an important guest who had summoned him, someone destined to be his enemy. Jaehyun realized that he was the child burdened with the fate of an adversary. To his surprise, he noticed that she remained petite and of average height. This made him wonder why Loki had chosen a child like him to be his adversary. If he were to die, all his plans would be rendered meaningless. She firmly grasped his neck and urged him to become stronger, emphasizing his importance to them. He needed to surpass Loki in terms of muscularity and defeat the Nightshade. In return, she promised him a great reward within two months. Failing to accomplish this would result in his own demise at her hands. Suddenly, a bright flash of light transported him to the entrance of the dungeon. There, he discovered that he had encountered the goddess of death, who ruled over Helhammer, one of the nine mythological realms. It became evident that he needed to become stronger, as she would kill him once he ceased to grow in strength. She had received a message from Park Sungi, requesting her visit to Sung Yoon the following day. Intrigued by his awakened profile, she called him, as he possessed a remarkable 97% talent rate in magic class. Such exceptional talent was rare to find, even with a worldwide search. Consequently, he arrived at her office the next day. She inquired about his opinion on the contract, which offered favorable conditions, such as a monthly living allowance, and access to fellowship equipment up to B rank when cleaning the basement. The terms seemed to be in his favor, prompting Jaehyun to express his own conditions before agreeing to the agreement. On the other hand, Seung Yoon was prepared to accept any situation and requested to be taught about magic. To assess his talent, he created a monocube and challenged her to overcome it, a task usually reserved for magicians of a certain rank. As she entered the cube, Park worried about her safety while Seung Yoon remained confident in her abilities. Jae Hyun felt immersed in a mana-filled ocean, focusing on finding the exit as the only means of escape. He managed to overcome the cube in just 40 minutes, setting a new record. As a crack appeared in the cube after only 10 minutes, they were left wondering about the unexpected development. Upon entering, Jae Hyun noticed a crystal cube with an unusually dense mana emanating from it. Intrigued, he believed that breaking it might provide an escape. Taking the crystal in his hand, he shattered it, causing a crack to form. The cube began to break apart, leaving Park Sung Jae and Yu Seung Yun in shock. It was rare for a magician to successfully escape the mono cube, with only 7% managing to do so. Even then, it usually took them more than three hours. B rank magicians took two hours while rank magicians took about an hour and a half. The current record holder for the fastest monocube break was Carmilla from the European Union, who achieved it in 36 minutes. However, Ye Hyun had just surpassed that record by 26 minutes. After emerging from the cube, Seung Yun asked Ye Hyun how he managed to escape so quickly. His response surprised her. He had destroyed the monocrystal. In awe, she vowed to help him become the greatest magician. Meanwhile, Jae Hyun's mother and Yu Jung were anxiously waiting for him at home, as he had not yet returned. When he finally arrived, they were both taken aback. His mother couldn't help but worry that he may have gotten involved in something bad. Jae Hyun proceeded to explain everything to them, but Yu Jung believed that he had either eaten something that affected his mind, or simply gone crazy. She recalled that a few days ago, he had expressed a desire to become a warrior. Curious, he asked her why she was there and where her parents were. Yu Jung revealed that they had gone on a business trip, 
so she had come to stay overnight. Suddenly she remembered that she had left something running and promptly woke up to scold Ye Hyun. Returning to Jae Hyun and Seung Yoon, she informs him that they will be competing. Prior to their first lesson, she allows him to make the first move. Observing his posture, she deduces that warriors often strike various poses. However, he surprises her by simply holding his hand and pushing his back. She had expected him to land at least one hit. Despite being a healer, he claims that he hasn't abandoned his warrior habits. After all, a magician cannot recklessly launch forward attacks. Now, it is his turn to demonstrate how a magician fights. This time, she will be the one attacking. She launches an attack towards him, but he effortlessly evades it. Then, it is his turn. He employs the lightning chain kill skill, but she skillfully dodges his attack, leaving him unable to land a hit. In response, she throws a mana crystal at him, which connects. However, he remains silent. Determined, she intensifies her attack and urges him to endure it. In an instant, he activates the universal derivation skill and swiftly nullifies her spell. She is astonished by the immense power displayed by an untrained child. Suddenly, she launches her final attack at him. Caught off guard, Jaehyun fails to stabilize himself and falls to the ground. Between him and the S-ranked raider, she requested that he refer to his teacher as such from now on and extend congratulations for being his first student. Later, Yu Jung dedicated her time at home to studying magic spells, resulting in a 5% increase in her magic efficiency. Each time she accomplished something, the system never failed to remind her, seemingly urging her to improve. Suddenly, a person appeared in her thoughts, questioning whether he had chosen the path of a magician willingly. On the other hand, Park Sung Jae inquired Seung Yun about her reasons for wanting to teach Jae Hyun considering that many magicians had attempted to become her students without success. She assured him that if another ranked magician were to emerge in the future, it would undoubtedly happen. After all, he was still the only magician in the country who had achieved the rank of S. Although his effectiveness in battle as a healer was relatively low, if he were to suddenly appear like a comet, it would undoubtedly shake the entire world. He attempted to develop a mana enhancement pill that would permanently boost the mana of those who were awakened and consumed it. This pill was highly sought after by all magicians. After mixing the chemicals, there was an unexpected explosion, resulting in his failure. He had used three different sets of ingredients, and if this trend continued, he would deplete all his funds. He recalled that in November 2020, no one knew how to create pills, and it wouldn't be discovered for another five years. This meant that he was the sole individual aware of the required ingredients. Prior to traveling back in time, a renowned alchemist freely shared the recipe for this pill, emphasizing its significance. Lee E. Song, known worldwide, was the only individual capable of producing the pill. Therefore, E. Han decided that she should locate and contact him later. She discovered that he was her senior, currently in his first year at Millet Academy. Consequently, her destination was Millet Academy. Just as Igrasil emerged and monsters began to appear, some individuals raced to the scene, including Quickblade Liation. He eventually arrived at the main entrance of the academy, a place that held familiar yet haunting memories from his youth. After obtaining permission, he began searching for a liaison. Despite being in the battle department, he was not particularly skilled. He contemplated starting his search in the classroom. Suddenly, he noticed a group of students gathered in one area and approached them. Meanwhile, Chae Song was pushed by someone, and Chae Hyun assisted him in regaining his balance. The student who had pushed Jae Song became hostile and demanded an explanation for the interruption, while Jae Hyun was relieved to have found him. The young boy inquired about his relation to Lee Jae Song, suspecting that they might be brothers. Despite their dissimilar appearances, the boy was cautioned against leaving the area. In response, he utilized the Holy Arrow skill and launched an unexpected attack on Jae Sang. Astonishingly, she was able to cast spells without any signs of fear. Enraged, the boy attempted to strike again, but Jae Hyun activated the Mana Barrier skill, causing the boy's sword to be forcefully disarmed. Consequently, he was defeated and left severely injured. Witnessing his condition, the boy retrieved a healing potion and hurled it at his face. 
Ye Sang was taken aback by the potion's effectiveness, prompting Jae Hyun to invite him to accompany him to the infirmary. Informing him that he was undetectable to others, ensuring their conversation remained private, he inquired if her father had sent her to this place. Nihan responded by stating that she had no knowledge of her father's involvement. She disclosed her purpose for being there, seeking his assistance, and requested that he create a potion for him. However, A Sang confessed his lack of expertise in such matters. Jae Hyun then presented him with the potion he had sold on the black market, leaving him astonished at how she had discovered it, and how his trail could be traced through such illicit means. It was a reminder that those involved in clandestine activities must always safeguard the identities of both buyers and sellers. Realizing that without Odin's eye, he would have never considered searching for this elusive potion. He pondered whether placing it on the black market had been a mistake. He had not anticipated that his actions would yield such financial gains. He implored Asang to keep their transaction a secret from others and promised to do anything in return. However, Ye Hyun expressed his disinterest in such an arrangement, stating that he simply required someone capable of creating potions. He then escorted her to his studio, where Jae Hyun revealed his desire for a superior potion that could permanently enhance a raider's magical abilities. Yet even Jae Hyun was taken aback by the impossibility of such a request. He suggested seeking out other alchemists for assistance, but Jae Hyun insisted that it was her who he wanted to undertake the task assuring her that he would provide all the necessary resources. After several months, she underwent training with Sung Yun, becoming more powerful than ever. When he managed to create a crack in her shield, she activated the sacred chain skill and launched an attack. However, he was able to dodge this time. Suddenly, the garden summoned both of them, signaling the end of their training session for the day. They had both put in a lot of effort. He was astonished to see that the training hall was constructed with arc metal, now left in ruins. It required immense strength to even leave a small scratch on it. He acknowledged his own growth in strength at an incredibly rapid pace and inquired if he had studied theory separately. Min Jae Hyun revealed that he had learned it from a friend and requested permission to attempt the dungeon raid once more to test the effectiveness of the training. The enemy was a C ranked boss monster something he could never have defeated in his previous life. However, he had only a few days left before the Queen of Hell would come for him. On the other hand, the East had finally produced a mana pill for him and asked if he was ready to consume them. Without hesitation, he swallowed one of the pills, resulting in a 15% increase in his magic stat. He was impressed by its unique effects and expressed gratitude for her incredible talent. It was now time to finally defeat the Nightshade. The following day, he arrived at the entrance of the dungeon. Upon entering, he found himself transported to a specific dungeon known as Helheim, the Land of the Dead, as indicated by the Nornir system. Sinister magical energy emanated from various corners of this place. If he managed to defeat Nightshade today, he would have the opportunity to meet Hell once again. Suddenly, numerous Rogers and Rats emerged, and he swiftly began defeating them all. His experience points gradually increased as well. Meanwhile, outside the dungeon, Park Sung Jae sensed someone's presence. It turned out to be the person who came to handle the fellowship business. He also expressed his desire to see her, knowing that she was not part of the Lotus Fellowship. He was aware that she had been lying because they hadn't been in contact since college graduation. He then inquired if he was the one managing this dungeon. However, Park insisted that it was none of her concern. She mentioned hearing rumors about Seung Yoon being ill, but Park dismissed it as mere gossip. She proceeded to show him a picture of Ye Hyun and asked about his identity since he frequently visited the Lotus Guild and met with Seung Yoon. Once again, Park replied that it was none of his business. Instead, as Ye Hyun defeated all the dungeon monsters, the Nightshade boss made its appearance. The assailant relentlessly launched attacks at her, but he skillfully evaded every single one. He had studied his opponent's attack patterns, rendering Nightshade's attempts futile. In a desperate move, he unleashed a powerful chain lightning skill, aiming to strike his adversary. However, it proved insufficient to overcome him. After a fierce struggle, 
he managed to break free from the chain, prompting Eon to receive an alert that Nightshade had entered a state of rampage, increasing its power by one and a half times. To counter this, he ensnared Nightshade with a stigma. If not removed within ten minutes, it would result in a death sentence for the user. Yehyun activated the universal derivation skill, attempting to destroy the stigma. In the midst of his efforts, he suddenly sensed a malevolent presence from hell, accusing him of interference. Despite the accusation, he pressed on, knowing he had to defeat the monster within the given time frame. He launched an attack, but Nightshade began to flee. However, time was running out, and with each passing moment the pressure intensified. Taunting his opponent, he understood that victory would be his if he could prolong the fight. Nightshade unleashed a comprehensive area skill that he couldn't dodge. Breaking free from its effects, he made another attempt to attack. However, he hesitated, contemplating whether to use the Light Judgment spell once more, as it might invite interference. Recalling a previous encounter where his line of sight was compromised, he realized he needed to eliminate Nightshade's eyesight first. Activating the Wind Boost skill, the power of the wind surged through his body, enabling him to strike at Nightshade's eyes. After some time, a few other monsters emerged in the vicinity. Yehyun successfully activated the Sacrificial Device skill, enabling him to detect all the undead monsters. He then transformed the skill into an attack skill and executed it flawlessly. As a result, he was granted 3,000 points a martial item core stat of 198, and shadow armor. Additionally, his level increased by three, earning him the prestigious title of the one who defeated the first attempt. After some time, the Temple of Hell beckoned him, and he made his way to its entrance. Suddenly, a horde of monsters emerged from the temple and launched an attack on him. Undeterred, Jaehyun bravely entered the temple and called out to Hell, expressing his desire to meet her. However, a formidable beast stood in his way, refusing to grant him an audience. Instead, the beast invited him to visit her palace. After a period of time, he arrived and offered his congratulations for successfully completing the trial and overcoming the challenges. Yehyun inquired about why she had sent him to the Nornir system and given him the trial, to which she explained that it was to help him fulfill his destiny as a great soldier. She emphasized that he was destined to be a formidable adversary even capable of challenging the supreme god Odin. Despite his initial refusal, he acknowledged that he could not go against Odin's wishes to have everything under his control. Before she could delve further into the matter, he sent her back to Earth, where she received blessings from Hell and acquired passive skills. Everything that had transpired was predetermined by fate and in accordance with prophecy, foretelling numerous obstacles ahead. Therefore, she needed guidance to navigate through challenges and stay on the right path, no matter how difficult the journey may be. The day had come for his first day at Mile's Academy, and he appeared slightly anxious. Yu Jung noticed his unease and inquired if something was bothering him. He believed that his worries stemmed from the fact that none of his questions had been answered. However, he took solace in the fact that he possessed a passive skill that could negate any abnormal status inflicted upon him. Soon after, a girl named Park Hannah from the Lotus Guild approached him and expressed her desire to give him a gift for entering the academy. This revelation surprised him, as he discovered that she was the sister of Manager Park from the Lotus Guild. As they strolled through the lobby, he sensed a faint glow emanating from the treasure gate. Curiosity peaked. He made his way towards it and activated his supreme divine eye skill, which allowed him to see through illusions and uncover the truth. On the other side, he witnessed a boy named An Hoyeon engaged in a fight with another boy. Swiftly defeating his opponent, An emerged victorious. His father commended him for his triumph, but cautioned him against becoming too complacent, as his adversary was not particularly formidable. He advised An to prepare for the next task on his agenda. While An grew weary of this monotonous existence, devoid of any personal desires, he knew that this was not the raider he aspired to be. Unbeknownst to him, he possessed a weapon capable of enhancing his magical detection abilities. Meanwhile, they both remained oblivious to each other's presence, despite being in the same vicinity. His father purchased a multitude of weapons for him from the academy, 
despite her attempts to dissuade him by pointing out that spending so much money on such items would hinder their ability to cover his mother's hospital expenses. His father dismissed her concerns, emphasizing the importance of focusing on training for his future role as a rank-and-file raider. Feeling like a mere tool following his father's commands, he was taken aback when news of a nearby dungeon and emerging demons reached them. The academy staff tried to maintain order, but chaos ensued as people fled, leaving little time for the raiders to arrive. Despite his father's warnings to stay out of harm's way, he couldn't ignore the plight of the civilians and decided to take matters into his own hands. This was his chance to prove himself as a capable and independent raider, eager to test his skills. However, faced with a horde of demons, he found himself paralyzed with fear as they closed in on him. Just as they were about to attack, Jaehyun appeared, recognizing him as An Hoyeon. Reflecting on a previous encounter with Park Hanna, where he had purchased an item for a hefty sum, he now understood its true value as a weapon against demons, determined to protect the residents and ensure their safety. He cautioned his companion against engaging with any of the goblins emphasizing the importance of fishing to activate his skills and launch an attack on the goblins. Surprisingly, he discovered that he had already reached a high enough level to possess such abilities. However, he needed some time to develop them further for his intended purpose. Eventually, the two of them successfully eliminated all the demons. When the National Raider arrived, he was taken aback by the sight before him and inquired about their concern for the goblins. He recognized one of them as a renowned genius, while the others appeared to be around the same age. He pleaded with her to keep their encounter a secret, as he believed no one would believe him. Park mentioned that they would receive a reward for their raid, but he declined to accept it and requested that his share be given to him discreetly. The primary reason behind his decision was his desire to conceal his powers from his father. Furthermore, he was unaware that he had transitioned to the path of a magician, and if his father were to find out, he feared the consequences. Not wanting to take sole credit for their achievements, he then recollected that the money from the reward could potentially aid in improving his mother's condition. On the first day of Millet Academy, there was a buzz of excitement as everyone discussed the bravery of a certain individual. However, amidst the chatter, another girl named Seo Ina captured everyone's attention. She was renowned as one of the top-ranked raiders, and the protagonist believed that having her on his side would be advantageous. Yet he couldn't help but notice that she stood out from the rest. Despite this, he understood the importance of patience. Meanwhile, the academy president took the stage and introduced himself. It was then that Ye Hyun remembered that this was the same person who had killed Kim Yoo Jung in his previous life. Determined not to let history repeat itself, he vowed to protect her this time. The president urged the students to commence the new entrance ceremony, which led to the old students engaging in a game of stealing each other's business cards. As the students moved into a closed room, they discovered a magic circle that posed a potential danger if they were to fall. Eventually, they arrived at an abandoned location, and Che Hyun checked on Yu Jung to ensure she was all right. It was then that his gaze fell upon a girl with black hair and brown eyes. She possessed an innate genius and a remarkable magic aptitude of 91. In her previous life, she had become the catalyst for changing the world's perception of magicians and had risen to become the second-ranked raider after guild leader Yonhua. This extraordinary individual was none other than Seo Ina. In the control room of the Miles Academy Center, an instructor informed the chairman about the talented cadets this year, such as Kim Yu Jung, Seo Ina, and Lee Suyuk, who all scored around 90% or higher in aptitude. All students made it to the hunt, which took place on an artificial plane created with magic. Approximately 5% of the cadets failed in this challenging environment. The annual event was designed to assess the students' abilities, and Ye Hyun emphasized the importance of not underestimating their opponents, especially Seo Ina. The chairman appeared on the screen and explained that students could only use C-rank skills or lower, earning points by stealing name tags. Che Hyun instructed Yu Jung to find shelter as they needed to stay there for three days, suggesting they bring Seo Ina for safety. As they planned, two seniors arrived, 
expressing excitement at the prospect of gaining points easily. Yo Jung warned Ina to flee as the seniors were skilled fighters. She recalled Quan So Yul's unique ability to locate targets within a 300 kilometer radius, realizing the danger they faced if they didn't act quickly. When one of the seniors attacked, Ina swiftly dodged and retaliated giving him an ultimatum to surrender his name tag before making her escape. He successfully attracted the attention of the senior students as planned, but his endurance was nearly depleted. The wind boost active skill was then activated successfully. Subsequently, he ventured into the paralyzing spore mushroom habitat. A few days prior, Ye Hyun had consulted Ye Sang on how to handle the paralyzing spore mushroom during the freshman hunt. She had advised him that the sap of the ash tree would serve as the most effective remedy. During this time, some students fell victim to paralysis within the mushroom habitat. One of them urged the group to retreat due to the danger. Park Sung Hyuk was instructed to remain behind and watch their backs from the outside. This was all part of a plan to ensnare Jae Hyun, as he had defeated one of their companions and was expected to come looking for them. However, Upon their arrival, Yoon Jung was already present. They immediately launched an attack on her, but she activated the paralysis skill. The spore fungus erupted, causing all living beings within a 50-meter radius to be paralyzed for two hours. Upon their paralysis, Jae Hyun arrived at the scene. Despite being warned by one of them that their friends outside were prepared for this situation, Jae Hyun insisted on confronting them. They engaged in combat, resulting in a message popping up indicating that 100 zero points had been deducted from the contestants' party. Seo Ina intervened by kicking one of them in the face, leading to all of them receiving 100,000 points. Only three of them remained, all of whom Jae Hyun defeated, resulting in them losing 100 points zero three times. According to the updated student ranking list, Jae Hyun claimed the top position with Seo Ina and Kim Yu Jung following in second place. Yu Jung was then given the antidote potion to counteract the effects of the mold, and they proceeded towards their agreed meeting spot for the evening. He attempted to create a potion for stamina recovery that he had learned from Jae Sang. Despite numerous failed attempts, Seo Ina finally acknowledged his efforts. She treated him with respect, as if he were older and more experienced than them. Following this, Seo Ina prepared a meal for both of them, which they greatly enjoyed. However, the instructor was disappointed as An Hoyeon came in fourth place, contrary to everyone's expectations of her coming in first. The top two spots were claimed by witches. Meanwhile, the chairman was in disbelief that Ye Hyun, the new student, had defeated their martial arts student. An instructor presented Ye Hyun's file to the chairman, revealing his impressive 97% magic talent. The chairman chuckled and decided to verify it himself, recognizing Jae Hyun as a remarkably talented individual. Jae Hyun then proceeded to enter the forest, surpassing many students and accumulating 11 million points, securing the top position. Jae Hyun suddenly sensed a power greater than his own, only to discover that it was An Ho Hyun who had arrived. However, something seemed amiss as they noticed that she was behaving erratically as if possessed by something. It was revealed that the root cause of this incident was her innate brainwashing abilities, orchestrated by Gu Jia-in. This tragic event mirrored a similar occurrence during the Academy Festival, where a joyous occasion turned into a deadly disaster due to Gu Jia-in's brainwashing skills. Despite the eventual exposure of all his crimes, Gu Jia-in found himself stripped of his position and trapped. He had committed a heinous crime that seemed to allow him to escape and vanish from the public eye without consequence. In the midst of this tragedy, many students tragically lost their lives, including Kim Yu Jung, who selflessly sacrificed herself to save the weak and helpless Jae Hyun. Realizing that he needed to break free from the brainwashing effect, Jae Hyun pondered his next move. Suddenly, a quest materialized before him to rescue the students who had fallen victim to the brainwashing magic. If he could successfully bring these students back to their senses, he would be rewarded with a blank card. These blank cards possessed the extraordinary ability to perfectly replicate any skill, no matter how unique or high-ranking, 
as long as the player had witnessed it. Furthermore, all negative side effects of the skill would not be copied. Yu Jung stepped forward to offer assistance, but he declined and urged them to leave as far away as possible. If they could, he requested that they give him some points. Once they did, they both made their escape while he remained behind. It had been a while since he defeated another student and earned a total of 600,000 points. Somehow, he managed to survive for two days, and now the game was nearing its end. If he could endure for just one more day, he believed he had done quite well. However, claiming first place was still a difficult task. Suddenly he appeared before her, asking for a small favor. He proceeded to manipulate her mind, brainwashing her. With a murderous intent, he charged towards Yi Han. Yet, Yi Han skillfully evaded his attacks, surprising him. Taking advantage of her distraction, he activated his active skill and caught her off guard. However, she managed to escape from his grasp, as his body reacted slower than his eyes could follow. He possessed a keen sense of battle, making it more challenging for her than she had initially thought. Additionally, he could employ absolute calculation to counteract the brainwashing. However, the issue at hand was the person currently observing them. He needed to guide them in the right direction. He was confident in his ability to handle the situation. Soon, he engaged in combat, displaying his martial arts prowess and emerging victorious. Meanwhile, the chairman thoroughly enjoyed the spectacle. Suddenly, he activated the flash bomb skill, causing a blinding flash. In an instant, they were unable to see what was happening. He quickly realized that he had cast a spell to obstruct their vision. After the show, the chairman instructed Instructor Kim to bring Jaehyun to his office. Jaehyun utilized his exceptional skill in universal derivation to undo the brainwashing effect on An Hoyeon. When Hoyeon regained consciousness, he had no recollection of what had transpired. Standing before Jaehyun, he felt extremely unwell and inquired if Jaehyun knew the identity of the person responsible for his condition. However, Jaehyun denied having any knowledge about it. A message appeared, indicating that Hoyeon had successfully completed the sub-quest of rescuing students from the clutches of brainwashing magic. As a reward, he received a blank card, which surprised him considering his deteriorated physical state. While Jaehyun remained unscathed, he helped Hoyeon to his feet and handed him his name tag. However, Yehyun declined to accept it, as it would mean being eliminated from the game without a name tag. Despite Hoyeon's assurance of having accumulated a substantial number of points, Jaehyun insisted on keeping the name tag. Jaehyun, Seoina, and Kim Yu Jung each received 10,000 points, bringing them great joy. For the first time, Yu Jung felt a sense of growth and liberation from her past, where she had felt powerless. They continued to move forward, one step at a time. The 72-hour new student hunt event came to an end. Che Hyun amassed a staggering 1,530,000 points, while all the students returned to the real world. When their points were converted into real-life currency, it amounted to 1,530,000 plus an additional 1,000 points. Jaehyun secured the first place position, with both Seo Ina and Kim Yu Jung earning 180,000 points each. Furthermore, there were approximately 1 million bonus points. Yu Jung was overjoyed, realizing the value of the points in terms of money. Shortly after, instructor Kim Seo Gi appeared and summoned the three of them, informing them that he had something important to discuss. However, he chose to do so in the privacy of the main director's office, away from the other students. Mr. Kim instructed Seo Ina and Yu Jung to take a seat and wait for him. He arrived after a while, prompting them to stand up in respect. However, Jae Hyun remained silent and sarcastically pointed out his lateness, mentioning how close he was to falling asleep while waiting. The others were amazed at Jae Hyun's audacity in speaking to the chairman. As a reward, they were offered the Millais dorm's luxurious room free of charge, along with priority access to all Millais facilities. In case of unsatisfactory test results at Millais, they were given the chance to retake the test and alter the outcome with three special gifts. Despite the tempting offer, they declined, viewing it as something they could achieve through hard work in a month. 
Upon reading the contract, they discovered that signing it meant allocating 30% of their income to the school while working as a raider for five years. Feeling deceived, they rejected the agreement, causing the chairman to express his disappointment. He tried to persuade Seo Ina and Kim Yoo Jung to reconsider, but they stood firm in their decision. Frustrated, the chairman claimed it was the best offer they would receive and attempted to manipulate them. However, Jae Hyun's hell blessing skill prevented the chairman from using his brainwashing abilities and even allowed Jae Hyun to copy the chairman's talent onto his blank card, surprising everyone present. Afterwards, he rose from his seat and requested Yu Jung and Seo Ina to vacate the premises. As they exited, Seo Ina inquired if he possessed any knowledge regarding the chairman, particularly noting the change in his demeanor when conversing with her. In response, he cautioned them against placing trust in anyone, be it the chief director or the instructor. Yu Jung, echoing her sentiments, advised Seo Ina not to rely on him, as he had abandoned her on the streets. Upon his return to his dorm room, Jaehyun experienced a wave of emotions he hadn't felt in quite some time. The stale scent that permeated the room, the creaking floor that had long gone unrepaired, and the overall gloomy ambiance of a space where underachieving students were expelled. He vowed not to subject himself to this torment again. Upon arriving at their destination the following day, they were greeted by an instructor named Kim ji -yeon. She proceeded to teach them the fundamentals of acclimatizing to mana. Jaehyun couldn't help but feel that he had never encountered her before, not even in his previous life. Perhaps she was one of those who had quit. Instead of a traditional classroom, she led them to a facility where she intended to assess their mana sensitivity and create mana cubes for each of them. Jaehyun noticed that this mana felt denser compared to the one he had experienced previously. It was then revealed that they were in a mana space created by enhancing the mana cubes commonly used by guilds. The mana space was divided into various density rooms. The first room resembled the standard atmosphere, but as they progressed, the average strength of the incoming students increased. They reached the third level before being instructed to line up and follow the instructor into the first level. Surprisingly, none of the students encountered any issues. Moving on to the second level, the instructor then directed them to proceed to the third level room. At this point, approximately half of the students raised their hands and gradually stopped. They had reached the sixth level, with many students unable to progress further. Ye Hyun, on the other hand, seemed to be faring well. Observing him, it became apparent that improvement was necessary. Currently, there are a total of four remaining students. These students include Min Ye Hyun, Kim Yu Jung, Seo Ina, and Lee Suyuk, all of whom are now in the seventh grade. It appears that they have been performing well academically. As a result, they have progressed to the eighth level. However, Yu Jung and Suyuk began to face difficulties and raised their hands when they reached the ninth level. The situation seemed to worsen as they continued to the next level. Yu Jung was concerned about her well being, but she decided to push through. Unfortunately, she eventually lost consciousness and had to be taken to the nurse's station. Despite this setback, she managed to reach the 10th level. At this point, the instructor found it increasingly challenging to breathe, and he realized that it was becoming more difficult for him to continue. Consequently, he made the decision to leave from that point onwards. All the students applauded for him. Min Jae-hyun had successfully reached level 10 of the mana room, earning the admiration of his peers. The instructor encouraged everyone to give their best efforts. Lee Soo-hyuk pondered how he could also achieve level 10 and sought guidance from his partner, asking for any knowledge they could share. The following day, Seung yoon contacted him to inquire about her new student hunt event and proudly announced that she had secured the first place. He congratulated her on her impressive start acknowledging that Miles was renowned for its challenging obstacles. Seung Yun then inquired if the other students were worthy of consideration. She mentioned Seo Ina, Kim Yu Jung, and Lee Jae Sang, stating that they were all potential candidates for the guild. Additionally, there were other talented students who deserved recognition. Seung Yun was aware that Lee Jae Sang was among them, and if Yeon Hua recruited him, it could potentially lead to conflicts with Lee Jaesin's Zephyr Guild.
Despite this potential risk, Seung Yun asked Ye Hyun if he still believed they should recruit her. He responded affirmatively, as he believed she had the potential to become the world's best alchemist in the future. Meanwhile, Mr. Park entered the room and informed Seung Yun that Baek Ji Hyun's representative had arrived to meet her. When she asked for directions, he mentioned that they had noticed a talented young student under his guidance and inquired about her value. Yu Seung Yun declined the offer, emphasizing that their fellowship members are not viewed as money. Knowing that Seung Yun would reject the proposal, he politely excused himself and left the office. The following day, the physical ability test took place, with him securing the top spot this time, followed by Jae Hyun in second place. He felt the need to improve himself to match a martial arts genius, especially after the head director mentioned that the instructor found him intimidating as his power did not align with that of a mage. Soon after, the announcement was made for the second test, the room avoidance test. All students were required to participate and analyze patterns while battling drone monsters. Each group was provided with a device resembling an earphone, which served as a receiving device and supported a battle system with virtual reality features. The test was to be carried out in groups of four, with Ye Hyun placed in group three alongside two mage class students and two martial arts students. Lee Soo Yok's intentions seemed suspicious, as he appeared eager to challenge Jae Hyun from the start. It was their moment to shine. Upon entering the room, a skeleton soldier materialized, prompting Ji Han to swiftly engage and emerge victorious. The students and teachers were left in awe as a message announced her flawless completion of the Asia Test Level 1 raid, earning her bonus points and advancing them to Level 2. This time the opponent was a Tai, whom she also defeated flawlessly setting a new record by completing all ten decks of the Asia test. Su Hyuk marveled at the magician's prowess in battle. He then challenged Jae Hyun to a duel at the Millais Academy Festival, but Jae Hyun declined, citing another opponent. Meanwhile, An Hoyeon strategized to challenge Jae Hyun at the festival to reclaim his nameplate, diligently practicing to avoid disappointment. As the teachers entered the office, the chairman awaited the results of the physical ability test. Instructor Kim informed him that three students had achieved perfect scores, including An Hoyeon, Cha Yu Wan, and Min Jae Hyun. Among them, Jae Hyun stood out as the best. He then requested regular reports on Jae Hyun's grades and activities, urging to inform him of any unusual behavior. The following day, Jae Hyun reached level 27 in the TSR evasion mission, flawlessly completing it which was his current limit. The next challenge was the Practicum Dungeon, and preparations had to be made. The Practicum Dungeon incident was one of the most tragic and embarrassing events in Millais Academy, resulting in the loss of many new students' lives. In his past life, Ye Hyun was involved in the incident with his team, being the sole survivor. Despite facing criticism for surviving, he remained at Millais Academy to honor the trust placed in him. However, he was determined not to relive that past and vowed to save everyone this time. As the day for dungeon training approached, Ye Hyun warmed up, mentally preparing for any challenges that may arise. All students gathered outside the dungeon, and the instructor warned them about the potential appearance of real monsters, including boss level creatures. Ye Hyun and Seo Ina found themselves on the same team, bringing him comfort. However, he was surprised when two raiders, his former teammates, joined them. Jae Hyun realized the significance of their presence, understanding why the Norn system had sent them. Now introduced as team members, they exchanged greetings and handshakes. Seo Ina stayed behind Jae Hyun, who excused his shyness by speaking on their behalf. Jae Hyun was chosen as their leader, outlining their strategy and emphasizing the importance of not faltering in the face of dungeon challenges. The instructor called all group leaders, including An Hoyeon of Group 4, to prepare for dungeon practice. The fourth group encountered weak-looking monsters that proved strong when attacking together. Hoyeon directed her team to shoot together, while Kim Yu jung used a flash bomb skill to defeat them. One team member was poisoned by kobolds, showing signs of deterioration due to a giant monster's magic power. The kobold boss's presence surprised them. Meanwhile, 
The third group progressed through the dungeon, hoping to clear it without harm. They entered a strange space, realizing the chairman's influence had created a variable. Anticipating an upcoming challenge, they prepared to counterattack. Facing stronger opponents than before, they were shocked to encounter a monster boss. Jae Hyun took action. Meanwhile, Instructor Gu Ja In observed the events unfolding on his tablet. He couldn't help but wonder how a student from the magic class could possess the same level of skill as him in the mage rank. However, there was something he couldn't do that the student could. Suddenly, Group 4 appeared before him, and Kim Yoo Jung informed him of a problem. The kobold boss had appeared in the dungeon, which surprised both of them. Upon hearing this, the rescue squad immediately began healing their teammates. Yu Jung inquired about Group 3, to which Ji An replied that they had not yet returned. Gu Ja In promptly contacted the chairman to inform him about the kobold boss and requested an emergency call. He managed to convince the chairman to send the emergency team as well. As Jie Hyun battled the monster, she sensed that the man possessed a B-rank power. The monster had the ability to regenerate parts of its body, making it a formidable opponent. Jae Hyun briefly considered fleeing from the situation, as she had done in her past lives. However, she made the decision to fight this time. Instructing her group members to leave the dungeon, she explained that she couldn't effectively fight while protecting them. Seo Ina stepped forward and offered her assistance, to which Ye Hyun agreed. She asked the other two members to return and informed the instructor about the situation later. Ye Hyun positioned herself behind the monster and charged towards it. To her surprise, the monster's body began to melt, indicating that someone had infused it with an excessive amount of mana. She quickly identified the person responsible and prepared to confront them. Utilizing her chain lightning skill, she launched an attack. With each strike, she felt her own power growing stronger and stronger. Jaehyun then requested Seo Ina's protection in order to evade her attacks. He was fully aware that defeating the kobold boss would increase the risk of his own demise. They had only one opportunity to eliminate the monster, which involved activating the mana shield skill to shield him. As he dashed towards the beast, he leaped over it and severed the mana thread connecting it. He then seized the Raven of Odin for that purpose. However, upon closer inspection, it became apparent that the Raven was merely a tool. Jaehyun inquired about Odin's intentions and the connection between Odin and the chief, but the Raven remained unresponsive. Realizing its lack of autonomy, he decided to end its existence. By successfully hunting down the first target of a specific quest, he earned five stat points along with an empty card. Suddenly, he received a warning that one of his teammates was in peril, and unless swift action was taken, they would perish. After a few hours, Seo Ina regained consciousness from her daze. Jae Hyun sat beside her, patiently waiting for her to wake up. He assessed her condition and noticed that her mana had fully recovered. Meanwhile, Kim Yoo Young was reprimanding their team members for leaving them behind. Despite their safe return, everyone was shocked to hear that the inspection team claimed they had perished due to the kobold monster. It was a relief when Park Sung Woo and Kim Jina expressed their belief in them. Jae Hyun took the opportunity to inform everyone that he had requested their assistance from the instructor, emphasizing that they did not deserve to be insulted or blamed. Earlier, Jae Hyun had confided in Seo Ina about the chairman's true nature how he viewed students as mere tools, and presented a different facade to the public and media. This was the reason why Jae Hyun concealed his abilities from others. On the other hand, the chairman was furious about his failed mission and granted Coach Kim one final chance to control Jae Hyun before his patience wore thin. Kim Yoo Jung had died before Jae Hyun regressed, causing An Ho Yan to not reach her full potential. In order to secure a better future, he had no choice but to intervene. However, Seo Ina was different. She possessed strength even without his involvement. Yet, he couldn't be certain of that. He needed to determine the connection between the chief and the easier ones, especially since this dungeon was only the beginning. More perilous situations would arise in the future, and he needed to become stronger to handle them. Ye Hyun recalled that there was a ranked-themed dungeon set to open soon in an amusement park in Seoul. 
It was there that he could acquire the speed-enhancing shoes used by Thor. Additionally, he had obtained an apple that could enhance his eyesight, endurance, and dexterity, while also slowing down the aging process. When Jae Hyun tried the apple, it tasted just like a normal one. A few days later, he visited the amusement park and observed the surroundings. After regressing, he approached the receptionist and identified himself as a raider of the Yonhwa Fellowship. A themed dungeon was about to open. The protagonist, a gifted student, received a call from her team manager after leaving the academy. She mentioned that the chairman was involved in the previous day's incident and advised keeping an eye on him. Additionally, she expressed doubts about Jae Hyun and hinted that she knew something. Meanwhile, an announcement at the amusement park urged everyone to leave as the time for the dungeon's appearance approached. The dungeon materialized, triggering memories from the protagonist's past life. As the dungeon theme unfolded, the protagonist assumed the role of Tialfi, a warrior who survived a Viking invasion. The first mission commenced, focusing on rescuing Tialfi's younger sister, Roskva, who was kidnapped by the antagonist, Thor. Jehun, embodying Thialfi, embarked on a quest to save Roskva and woke up on a stolen ship in search of her. As he and his friends devised a plan to reclaim the ship, they were suddenly attacked, forcing Jehun to postpone his search. Despite jumping from one ship to another, Jehun found himself in enemy territory, where he had to hide before attempting a rescue mission. To his surprise, he encountered a familiar face among the hostages. Seo Ah Yun is the name of the girl. As the dungeon suddenly appeared, she found herself in the bathroom. Upon emerging, she discovered the dungeon's presence. Determined to explore it, she caught the attention of someone who decided to follow her. She transformed into a character known as Roskva. When her opponents attacked her with arrows, she skillfully used her lightning abilities to evade them. She swiftly defeated them in combat. Afterwards, she approached Ahyan and cautioned him against his imprudent actions. The two were then dispatched to a restaurant. Jaehyun, curious about her magical abilities resembling martial arts, inquired about her skills. She claimed to excel in swordsmanship, but he saw through her deception. Jaehyun revealed his skill, accelerated cognition, which manipulates time perception. Impressed, she pleaded to accompany him, willing to assist in any way possible. The characters find themselves venturing into a haunted house, despite one of them having a fear of ghosts. Interestingly, the girl takes on the role of a cameraman, while Jaehyun assumes the position of a horror streamer. As they explore the eerie mansion, they are unexpectedly greeted by a man who turns out to be the butler of the mansion. This butler has a mission to uncover the truth about the mansion and guides them using the camera. Their first destination is the dining room, where the butler informs them about a feast prepared by countless individuals. The girl then deactivates her cognition acceleration skill and begins to uncover some intriguing details about the mansion. One such revelation is that the owner of the house is a child of approximately 12 years old, evident from the chair in the lobby. Meanwhile, outside the mansion, it has been approximately two hours since the dungeon appeared, and news reports mention the presence of the raider from the Lotus Guild and Ahyun in the dungeon. Ahyun attempted to open the door, but discovered that it was locked. Despite their efforts, they were unable to unlock it. The stamina required to successfully rob a basement was low. Suddenly, someone informed Ahyun that there was an issue with the camera, as it contained pictures of people leading them to their demise. This revelation indicated that the person claiming to be Alfred was an imposter. Additionally, it conveyed the message that they had uncovered 70% of Alfred's secret, which was the first mystery of the mansion. The camera, which they were unable to see, turned out to be the key to solving the puzzle. Jaehyun tried to activate his basic calculation skill, but was unsuccessful due to certain restrictions on his abilities in that area. He then decided to use his mana detection skill and discovered that the door key was hidden inside a pudding. Ahyun opened the pudding and retrieved the key, all while being observed by the butler. Although they did not enjoy the food, the butler promised to serve them better. They proceeded to the guest bedroom, as it was their designated room after dinner. To their dismay, they found blood in the room, leaving them with no other option. 
Jae Hyun bravely entered the room and sensed the presence of someone else, a girl covered in blood, with the butler standing behind her. Jae Hyun lost consciousness, and when he regained it, he found Ah Yun sitting beside him. They were both trapped in a dungeon, with signs of torture scattered throughout. Jae Hyun believed there must be a key hidden somewhere and decided to use his silent skill to break down the wall. He cautioned Ah Yun to remain quiet, as it would be dangerous if Alfred or anyone else discovered them. Suddenly, a puppy appeared and landed in Jae Hyun's hands. They suspected that the key might be in its mouth, so they decided to bring it along with them. As they reached the third floor, they were unsure of where to go next. The same girl from before reappeared, but Nihan instructed Ahan to leave, as they didn't have time to converse with a ghost. Jaehyun then questioned her presence and offered her assistance. When she remained silent, he inquired about the location of the Flandier room on the fourth floor. She pointed in the direction, indicating how they could confront the numerous armors there. Jaehyun successfully defeated them all. They finally entered the Flandier mansion. Upon examination, she discovered his diary, which contained the dark and eerie secrets of the mansion. As he read through the diary, he learned that he had been murdered, most likely by the monster who had taken over the mansion. The doppelganger's work was evident, as it had arrived with a group of people. A message in the diary revealed that all the secrets of the mansion had been uncovered, urging her to escape safely. In a sudden attack, he leaped towards him, but managed to evade the strike. Utilizing the lightning chain skill, he fought against the opponent, a dangerous B-ranked monster capable of mimicking skills and summoning other creatures. Despite the monster's abilities, his combat skills were lacking, and she admired Yi Han's prowess. She requested his body for consumption, and after untying her, he ultimately killed her, completing all the dungeon tasks and transitioning to the next real world. Upon arriving at the mysterious place known as Neverland, they encountered a show hosted by Bruin, who praised them for completing two missions. Jae Hyun inquired about the final mission, to which Bruin revealed it would involve a tag game. Pointing towards the gate, they were instructed to flee from the emerging monsters and reach the goal. Ian suspected deception noting that the monster's strength depended on the challenges faced. Jaehyun expressed concern about fighting while protecting, but she reassured them of their impressive rank S skills. The duo was astonished by the unexpected turn of events. A monstrous being named Surtur emerged, with a sinister desire to engulf the world in eternal flames. His fiery sword, capable of reducing everything to ashes within hours, was already in his possession even before the birth of the first titan, Ymir. Despite their attempts to flee, the intense flames prevented any escape. A young girl, overwhelmed with fear, began to weep, making direct confrontation too risky. Surtur decided to evade the battle and focus on reaching their destination. Utilizing his haste skill, he sprinted towards their goal. However, Another monstrous entity appeared at the destination, intensifying the flames. The girl requested Ion to create a diversion so she could lead the demons away and continue towards the destination. Sacrificing herself to distract the monster, she was vanquished. As he neared the objective, the clear condition of the quest suddenly became impossible due to a new monster's appearance. With no other option but to defeat it, he engaged in combat. When Jiayun contacted him with a plan to defeat the fire giant, she fled as he directed her towards a water tank outside. Together, they lured the giant to the tank, where Jiayun employed his illusion skill to deceive the monster with multiple images attacking it. Eventually, they succeeded in slaying the giant. He received magical shoes to enhance his stamina, while Jiayun obtained a Roscoe seal, boosting her strength by 50% and granting her the courage skill. With the completion of the final quest, Ye Hyun acquired the Undying Flame Surtur item. Following the disappearance of the dungeon, the two survivors emerged unscathed, leaving onlookers astonished by Ye Hyun's sudden vanishing act. The media had no option but to turn to interviewing the remaining individuals. The following day brought relief as there were no articles featuring him in the newspapers, undoubtedly the work of the Lotus Guild. This event served as a stark reminder of his own weakness, 
prompting him to strive for strength that would allow him to triumph over adversaries without resorting to underhanded tactics. He aimed to transform into someone so formidable that others would hesitate to even approach him out of fear.